Okay, so now uh, let's look at this uh, closer. We want to delete our target. Uh, we're not using it anymore. So we can delete this stuff. And uh, uh, while we're doing that, I want to mention this, that uh, we use target in here. And target was a global variable in this, uh, this code. And uh, I usually don't like to use uh, global variables inside of classes. I like to have the classes functional, so um, I want to pass in values and get values out. I don't want to refer to global variables. Uh, it worked well enough for the, the example that we did. But, uh, but I just wanted to point that out that typically it's better not to use global variables within a class. Uh, okay, so that was that. And uh, we had it moving, and so we want to, uh, instead of having it just warp all the time, for this example, we want to set up, uh, have it a bounce. And so, so here we have the asteroid environment, and uh, that's this. So this is the code that gives us the warping. So I'm not going to delete that, I'm just going to leave it and uh, label it as asteroid environment. So now we want a bouncing environment. Okay, so let's copy this down and then change it. Okay, so instead of uh, changing the position, we want to we want to change the position, but here I'll just delete that out for right now. Uh, we want to change the velocity. we did that. This is um, the way that we had our bouncing ball set up uh, originally. So this changes the direction of the velocity and what happens if we're below our lower bounds really far and we change our velocity then it's just going to bug out. So we need to, if it goes below our lower bounds, we need to also move it back up to our lower bounds. So. Uh, I just pasted that back in from like right here. That's the same. So uh, self, uh, we want to change it to lower bounds though. And then here we're doing the opposite. We are, I guess we're doing the same in terms of our velocity as it, when it reaches the upper bounds. We're going to change the direction of our velocity, but uh, we're not going to change it to the lower bounds. We're going to leave it at the upper bounds. So that way if it goes up really far above our bounds, then it won't, uh, it won't get stuck up there. And uh, I'm just going to keep talking through the tra <laughs> train. I apologize uh, for that. I'm recording in a different area today. So, uh, but, so let's test this and see if I overlooked anything. Okay, so you can see that it hit the lower bounds and bounced up. And also you can see that it's going pretty slow, so let's bump up our gravity. Uh, we had gravity down here. Let's say, let's try four first. Okay, so we're getting uh, more gravity and it's bouncing. So I think it's working okay. So let's go ahead and drop in our wind. Uh, 
we had apply force there. And it would be clearer. Uh, I'll set up something uh, soon so it'll have like it'll show our lower bounds and our upper bounds and all that so we can see it's bouncing off our lower bounds but we don't have anything to uh, visually represent our lower bounds right now yeah so this uh, this is working okay and uh, uh, one point that I want to make clear uh, I just want to point this out again is that our applying force is we're doing that above our update so this is affecting the acceleration and then the update is doing something with that acceleration to change its position so uh, like I said before we had the code up here that did something with acceleration and then uh, and then this happened and so now we want this to do something before uh, before this happens okay and uh, before we uh, close this video let's just throw in a bunch of bouncing balls and they're all uh, Yeah. 